Today I got a brand new Acer Swift X. I'm going to add a second M.2 NVMe SSD. I'll show you how to do it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Okay, today I got a brand new Acer Swift X 14 inch laptop. Um, I'm going to add a second M.2 SSD, in this case an SSD 980 from Samsung. It's an NVMe drive. It's a one terabyte. It come from the factory. It's got a 512 gigabyte SSD in there right now, but there are two slots in here, two M.2 slots. No two and a half inch bay, but just the two M.2 slots. Simply, I'm just going to add the second one terabyte and leave the Windows that's installed, Windows 11 that's installed on the 512 currently. Just leave that alone. So this is a really nice laptop. It's a 14 inch full 1080p display, IPS display. It's got a backlit keyboard fingerprint sensor. This model comes with a Ryzen 7 5800U 8-core processor. Um, it's got 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4 onboard memory. Unfortunately, there's no um, expansion slots to add more memory. It, it's right on the motherboard. You can't upgrade it. But 16 gigs of DDR4 is pretty good. So like I said, it has the 512 NVMe in it right now. And this one does have a really nice GPU in it. It's got the uh, GeForce RTX 3050 Ti with 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 dedicated video memory. It's got Wi-Fi 6, uh, Bluetooth 5.2, and it's got a 58 watt hour battery. Now what I'm going to do, here's the, here's the drive, the M.2 drive, the Samsung that I'm going to put in there, the one terabyte. I've added a heat sink to it. There's a thin half a millimeter thermal pad. Then the copper heat sink, I decided in case he installs some games or something, he's going to run them off of here, help dissipate some of that heat evenly off of there because there's not real good ventilation on the bottom side where the drive's going to be. But it's going to be right next to the 512 gig on the inside. Um, but you can get these heat sink kits online. They're pretty inexpensive, copper heat sinks, thermal pads, and some alcohol swabs in there. They're very inexpensive. <clears throat> So I'm not even going to turn it on. Um, it's very thin. One thing I do like about this model is you can actually, I believe, open it with one finger. And it's not going to flop all over the place, so that's kind of nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, with the RTX 3050 Ti in there, it'd be a nice little laptop for whatever, gaming or otherwise. Now, I've already taken all the screws out here, guys. Um, they are not Phillips screws. You're going to need a Torx bit. It's a T6 Torx, either a Torx driver like I got here or some kind of a bit. But um, make sure you use a T6. You don't want to booger up them screws because they're quite small. And I just kind of lay them out. They're all the same length. So it doesn't really matter which one goes back in what hole. But I always just kind of like to lay them out, make it look pretty. Now these are pretty tight fit. I'm going to lift the bottom off here to install that drive. I'm just going to use my blue triangle spudger tool here. I'm going to start right back in the corner here by the hinge. It seems to be a kind of a weak spot. That way I pop it in there. Because um, the, the seam along the edge in the front here, it's just really tough to get it in there. But back here, right by the edge, if you pop it in there, give it a quick little pry up like that. You can see it kind of lifts right, starts to lift right up. So I'm just going to carefully work it around here. And before you get inside, always make sure you're protected against static electricity. My bench tops, my floors, they're all anti-static. So I don't need to worry about it. But you can see it lifts off quite quite easily. Get my fingernail back in there. And over in here is where our M.2 drives are going to be in this area. So here we go. Um, don't touch anything you don't have to touch. Um, just good rule of thumb. I'm not going to disconnect the battery, but if you want to, right here is the battery connector. The, the, the plug just slides back towards the battery. It comes out pretty easily. But again, don't be touching stuff. you got your GPU, CPU, um, decent sized fan and some copper, so that's good. Here's the factory M.2 drive right here, and right next to it is our empty slot. So that's where I'm going to put in this bad boy. I'm hoping there's going to be enough room, enough clearance in there. There should be with the copper heat sink on there because it you know, makes it just a little bit taller, so to speak. 
So there is a mounting screw. I'm gonna carefully take it out. Away from the motherboard. Oop, away from the motherboard. And hopefully I got this lined up right. You want to have it back far enough so you get it secure. Make sure it goes in on the way. Good, that's perfect. But you can see with that heat sink on there, it sits up. Oh yeah, it's below the back. It's well below the height of the battery, so we should be fine. I just never know. Sometimes these are pretty tight fit in these laptops. But the, you can see there's two little bands that kind of hold on. That comes with the kit. Carefully put my screw back in. And all we're going to do is boot into Windows 11. Going to initialize that new one terabyte. And that's it. Um, this does have a removable Wi-Fi card, which is kind of nice. It's Wi-Fi 6, uh, Bluetooth 5.2, like I said. But pretty compact in here. But they managed to cram that 350 or 3050 Ti in there so there is some ventilation right across the back here as you can see so let's go ahead and just now that we got that mounted we're going to set this back in there pretty simple little upgrade should be anyway i'm going to wait to put all the screws back in just to make sure everything's going to be okay it comes with a um, 90 watt ac adapter as well very tiny little barrel But these Swift X's, this is my second or third one that I've done, I believe. They're, they're not cheap, but they're a good deal for everything that you get. Like I said, that 8-core processor, the 3050 Ti graphics. So let's go ahead and just fire it up. Like I said, this is Windows 11. It's brand new. There's nothing on it except Windows 11. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could, you know, install your Windows 11, do a clean install on the new one terabyte and leave the 512 as just the extra drive. But in this case, he said, nope, just put in the one terabyte, leave the Windows by itself on the 512. So nothing wrong with that. So I'm just going to go to the start button here. You can see that. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go up here to disk management right there. And there's our new drive showing up right there. I'm just going to hit OK. It's right down here. It's on allocated. I'm going to right click on it. I know it's kind of hard to see, but let me make it full screen. I'm just going to right click on it and hit new simple volume. Hit next. You could partition it if you wanted to, but we're not going to do that on this one. I'm going to hit next. Uh, it's going to be drive letter D. And here you can name it something if you want. New volume name, I'll just put uh, SSD drive. You can call it whatever you want or just leave it new volume. So there there it is, it's drive letter D. Boo -doo -boo. Yeah, let's just open up this real quick. So there's our C drive, our, our 512 gig SSD, and our brand new one terabyte drive ready to start loading games or whatever you want on it. So quick, simple little upgrade. Um, now we got one and a half terabytes of overall storage in this thing. So it'll go good with the Ryzen 7 and the RTX graphics. So that's about all I got on this one, guys. Um, appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like. I would appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.